That's uh, it's kind of a long story, but it's interesting. My uh, my good friend, his name is Marcus Wilson. He lived across the creek. He had uh, about three other brothers, and they were playing basketball all the time. And that's uh, that's how I was first introduced. They were a fishing family. Along with being fishermen, they knew how to make nets. We found an old building that was near the church, like a big empty room, and so we devised uh, baskets uh, out of, uh, what do you call, uh, hangers, clothes hangers. So he made a net for small enough to go around that hanger, and we used to play ball with tennis balls. I don't know how we got the tennis balls, but anyway, it worked. We'd play uh, from one end to the other, and uh, we had a good time. We could even make swishers with those uh, tennis balls, and so that's how we uh, developed a pretty good uh, accurate uh, eye. Ended up going to Lapway because we got annexed from the, uh, the school, public school in Spalding. So we had a few fights at first, but later on <laughs> we got to know, know each other and we got to be a, a better team. But in 56, we were ready. We ran a fast break without even touching the ball, we didn't even touch the floor. We just pass all the way down there and then uh, make a lane. And I had a hook shot that nobody could stop. And, uh, you know, I didn't even know who Kareem was at the time. Well, it was awesome. I mean, we were the first ones, and so anytime I see a team win state, I know how they feel. You look back to when you graduated high school, did you ever think Lapway basketball was going to be what it is today? No, no, I didn't. I just knew if we had the, the talent, if we had the, the type of guys like we were, well, then it could be possible. Full-court defense, playing hard 100% the whole time. It's very up-tempo, very fast, very havoc inducing. Lost the ball, stripped and stolen. Why not lead in the break? Out ahead to Titus Year out! A two-handed slam for Titus Year out! Love the fast break, love to shoot. Any good shot is a good shot. Working around three ball up top cross. Taylor knocks it home. Back to back threes for Lapway now. If you have seen in the highlights, there's a lot of Lock shot steals that turn into basket. They have the record for most girls basketball state championships in the state of Idaho. A play to get us going. We'll just run off that and keep feeding off that energy. Oh, the lap is coming, the community's coming. They give us more energy and that energy feeds into like us playing better. They're like really pushing us to do our best. It'll be like we're trying to play our hardest just for them. So why does this little community, who some say is just a wide spot in the road, produce so many good players? If you're gonna ask me the question about Lapway basketball, I'll just say it's life. People will say love, we love basketball. But Lapway I think is more like live. Walking through these? Yeah. It's 87 state champions. It's 88, 89. Three state champions, all undefeated. I try to touch them every time. You could have a successful basketball program and you could dip. You can be not good for three years or five years or seven years. It's been this. It's been up here, that's how good they've been. There's no valleys, there's no dips. That's the remarkable thing about it. I don't see anybody, any high school team in this area who's had the sustained kind of success year in, year out, decade in, almost decade out that these guys have had. It's not just boys basketball or girls basketball, it's been both. If you're going to win a state title at that level, you're probably going to have to beat Lapway somewhere along the way. It's not like they've had one coach for 25 years. It's been multiple different guys running multiple different offenses, 
yet they still win. That tells me there's a grassroots thing in Lapway, and that's why they've been good for as long as they've been good. And it's almost like uh, eat, sleep, live basketball here. So, I mean, <laughs> that's basically what you get. Growing up in Lapway, that's all we do is play basketball 24-7. On a Friday night, after a football game is over, we go right to the gym and play open gym. It's something you do all year round. It's like we have five, five gyms in our little town, and you always see kids in there dribbling a ball. A lot of the times, you never see a kid walking down the street without a ball in his hand. You know, when I was growing up, um, there wasn't so much of like the AAU and things that they have now. Uh, we had uh, outdoor basketball courts around here that everybody would show up and play. And you'd have, you know, three to five teams waiting to get onto the court. You know, good players growing up, playing with them. We played on the playground. You know, we were little kids, but we played with those, you know, older guys. And, you know, they would kill us, but we'd still, like, learn from that stuff. I remember that playing till dark. They just pushed you hard when you were young, and it was just run, and it was tough defense. They grow up together, so you grow up playing. All these teams that are good all play basketball from when they're first, kindergarten, first grade. They play with each other all the way through high school and stuff. Even after high school's over, they play in tournaments together. As you know, there's a lot of like, rich history in basketball here, and so it makes me feel proud to wear that Lapway jersey. And... Like all my ancestors and stuff played before me, and so like knowing that I'm helping carry on the tradition of playing sports. Lapway has a long like history of basketball players. Like who knows, might have my kids here playing basketball too when I'm older. And it's been back since you know the through the 60s all the way on. These championships now, a lot of the parents had, had won championships or were uh, real strong players and the kids' grandparents were also a part of it. But I think that's the crazy part is a lot of those teams, half of those teams are probably related. My grandma won the first state championship title. My mom won one in 2001. My uncle Pete won one in 2000. That's competitive too, I think it's competitive. Well, we got this many, they got that many. And it's, it's just competition, friendly competition, but, but it's always there. Sometimes it's hard to keep, to keep track of. I mean, you can see all of the banners up here and then uh, there's a lot of generational players that are out there and it just kind of keeps building and it's just every year. And... The one that really got everybody started as far as Lapa is concerned is the 84 team. In the 70s, there were a lot of good players and you know some good teams. We were real fortunate and we had, uh, I think we started to get a little bit more size in the 80s and then the other thing that was huge was when I was a senior in 84, it was the first year of a three-point shot. We took advantage of that right away. <laughs> so it was the first uh, championship of the 80s and so that kind of opened up the doors again. And after that pretty much all of the younger kids thought, oh bad, we can win state. It was neat to just watch as an experience. It made me, you know, as everybody else, motivated to play great, you know, play, get to that. Greg Jose was a freshman and on that team and as a senior he got his second state title and that's when they uh, had their 81 1-0 run. It was funny because we said to our coach, he's like, okay, what's your guys' goals this year? And we said, we want to win a state title, we want to be undefeated. And he was like, well, slow down, we need to, you know. He didn't really know what he had. No, listen, there's no reason to be discouraged. There's a good team there. But Crossfield just came in and he just was just a smart coach. I mean, he just really knew the game well. He saw what we were and that we had to prove and we had to prove it on the court. Keeping us all, you know, level-headed when when going into the next season and, and nothing was given. Nothing is ever given. You know, you had to earn it. Practices were seen like harder than our games because we'd play against each other and practice every day and, and some of them were all out battles, you know, where somebody might be starting over you and you wanted to make sure that you looked better than him on the court that day. In the end though, we all knew our roles. And so we played our role for the team for the team. And he coached to that and he took us to a next level. Have a winning streak that just won't quit. Those three years were like, you know, every night was like, who are we going to play next? Who are we going to beat next? Who are we going to play next? Who are we going to beat next? And the excitement just lasted for all three years. I mean, we knew we were a good team. Thinking that it was going to go for three years straight like that, 
Um, yeah, we never knew. The games just kept going and the street kept going. And Another town on the Northwest basketball map, Lapway, Idaho. The Lapway Wildcats streaking from obscurity to national attention. I think basketball is more or less the new tradition. And it's a tradition, something that we can hang on to and we can use to better our own self. And you got your people behind you. There's a lot of people here in the little Lapway that wouldn't, on purpose, not pay their electricity bill, their water bill, so they'd have money to go out to state tournament. We'll get home and scramble around, pay their water bill, get their water turned back on. Lapway, Idaho is a town of a little more than a thousand. Most of those people probably own a basketball. The thing that struck me more than anything is how many people were in the gym on a Tuesday night to see them play. Oh man, it was it was unbelievable. We'd get a stand in ovation just walking into the gym. We're known for that. I mean, the fans travel in hordes to watch the, the boys and girls play. And I think our state tournament that year was in Rigby. You believe me, it was packed over there. And Rigby is like a you know 12, 14 hour drive. A guy from Boise, he wrote a letter to the Boise Statesman. He couldn't figure out why the gym was so packed just to watch a little old Indian team, Lapway team play. Actually, Good Morning America came out and did a story on him. All the world, of course, loves the winner, and Hattie Kaufman has found a high school basketball team in a small town in Idaho that hasn't lost a game in three years. But there is more to this team than just its incredible winning streak. It was, it was awesome. It was uh, one of the girls that worked there. She's a Kaufman from Kamui, and she's a Miss First Tribal member. This is much more than a sports story. It is a story of determination, survival, and finally, victory, not only for the team, but for the community. Come storming in, take, took over the town, and we had a pep rally. We filmed a lot of the pep rally. We had a lot of dancers out there. It was pretty neat. These are the Wildcats. Their record 69 and 0. Some of the guys got to do a little talk. Lilfoot did a little talk about being this first, you know, playing ball. And we're doing it for our elders. That's how it ties in. But more importantly, we're doing it for us. They're led by an unlikely star. Littlefoot Ellenwood stands just 5 foot 10, but he averages 18 points a game and has broken all the school's records in assists and steals. I'm not biased just because he's my son. I'm biased because he can play. In my mind, I would still say he's probably the best high school player Idaho has ever seen, until somebody breaks that record and proves me wrong. Yeah, he was, he was a special player. Um, he just had this energy and he had this confidence about the way he played. He played hard, he played with passion. His leadership, it just, it just rubbed off on other, other teammates. He just brought it every game, every, every minute he was out on the court. The pressure is on the Wildcats this night. With their three-year winning streak on the line, they are facing their toughest competition, the Grangeville Bulldogs. <laughs> I mean, there, there's always the pressure out there. There's the pressure of going to districts and state and all of that. Uh, but when it comes right down to it, then it's just it's just going out there and uh, just balling. It's just playing basketball. The final score, 85 to 50. Lefty. These guys sometimes score more points in one ball game than we do an entire season. I think the last the last year there was a lot of pressure because we didn't even know he was gonna in the running for most uh, wins in a row, state titles, so and so forth. So one of the guys from Teton actually said, hey, you guys could break our record if you win every game next year. So that, that was our goal that year. The fact that you can win 50, 60, 70, 80 games in a row, absolutely ridiculous. It doesn't just happen, and that's why that streak probably is never going to be broken. It's kind of nice to have those legends to fall back on. We have that legacy to, to lean on. It's pretty hard to be, find a high school like that. And they're still there to this day watching games, sitting in their same spots. I think the generations, they build it up like more every year to get to here. The generation of people playing, and you just wanting to be like them. The most important thing to this year's team is that they were part of basketball history of this basketball town. It was a good story, and it turns out that it's a story that's kind of held up because, you know, there's been no decrease in just how good both the boys and girls have been. The other young kids just keep coming up. The junior varsity, in fact, has a record of 75 and 0. So when the seniors graduate, that won't be the end of the winning That's right. Street, you know? That's right. The girls are the state champions. The yeah. Girl, yeah. It's the whole town. It's
basketball. That's what you call a winning tradition. players that we played against 20, 30 years ago, you know, when we were all in our primes, if you will, and now we're older, but we still have that drive and that Tamina to play the game of basketball. And when we say Tamina, that means our heart, the heart's still in it. You're here representing your family, your tribe, your clan. The Piney Was is the, our, our community center, and it's, uh, you know, the, the gym is the central part, and so it's just right there within the, right in the middle of town, so. We call this where legends are made, you know, there's so many that, you know, have passed away that have played on this court, and, um, and many from reservations, other reservations that are here. Pay tribute to them for the legacy they leave behind. When you have legends go through there, you've watched so many of your uncles, your grandfathers, your dad. You, you've seen all these players play there, and then you have the chance to go there and play in front of your friends and family. As kids, you know, you grow up and you watch these um, the older ones play, and you marvel at them. You, you you mimic what they do, and every skill that we have, they're working on that, and then working on somebody else's too. So, and it's open every day. So if the high school is not open. The Piney Was is open. If Piney Was is not open, then we have the Boys and Girls Club. The Boys and Girls Club come, well, you go outside and play. Those young kids, boys and girls, have been dreaming since the time that they can remember. Probably their first basketball game was probably before they even remember going to a basketball game. And they've wanted to wear that shirt in that gym to play for that team to continue to add to the state titles since probably as soon as they can remember since they picked up a basketball and were dribbling it outside. This year we had 43 kids in our program. Um, that is over 80% of our boys in Lapway, in our school district, play, play basketball for me. Uh, it means everything to me because it's what I ever wanted. Uh, to play for a great team like this. A lot of people like look up to us and they compare us between generations. You know, everybody has a, the big debate of who's the best and who, what teams are the best. And you know, I'm biased, you know, I always think my team's always 87 is the best, but there's definitely 2021 is a, one of the best teams. But for me, I, I hear it every day because my grandpa, you know, his son was little for Ellenwood, so. He talks about it almost every time I see him, and he just, he wants me to be as great as him, maybe greater. It's hard to live up to that as a, as a 14, 15, 16 year old. I think it's more motivating for me. Well, there's a little pressure to it, but I think pressure makes, makes me play better, and makes me do better. So I went to school at Haskell Indian University, and then when I got to Lapway, I was just very involved with basketball. I was actually refereeing Cross and Titus and AJ when they were very young kids. So I already knew about the boys, I knew how good they were. When you get kids like this that are already very polished, I treat them like college athletes. Why not clear for takeoff again, another two-handed slam! This kid, he's gonna play D1 basketball. He's a very good coach and he expects like the most from you. And if you see you don't put 100% in, then you're not gonna make the team. So you just have to be ready to compete every day and be gritty. Our practice, we always used to hang our hat on like, this is the number one and number two team in the state. Like we're battling each other every day in practice. And I think that's what really got us to that next level was competing with each other in practice and being able to, you know, battle it out on the court and then still have that bond, that team bond. And guys that were comfortable in their role where they're not going to get 20 points a night, but they do the dirty work. And that's why that team was so good is guys bought into their role and was more about us than me. Some of us, you, you might not score as much as you want. You might not, you know, get as many assists. And so we all bought into that goal of, you know, we're all going to sacrifice a little bit, but your sacrifice is we're going to win a state championship.
The Genesee Bulldogs hosting the Lapway Wildcats. The Wildcats still undefeated in league, and they jump out to a big lead in the first half. So the second half, we still had a pretty good lead, but then they, they didn't miss a shot, actually. So, And we started to struggle offensively. So there was a little bit of panic, you could tell. But Genesee would claw back. Dawson Durham with a nice left hook on the low block. I think our heads were getting too big for ourselves. We were thinking we can just breeze through this team. That's what we thought going into that game, but they came out with the spark. They came out with a chip on the shoulder trying to beat us. But Genesee is already too close. Sam Spence gets an open look from the wing, ties it up with the three-pointer. We weren't making shots, and they were making shots. and. Next thing you know, we're down by six or so, and we just couldn't come back from it. Bulldogs take the lead, and they complete the phenomenal comeback and win this one 60 to 55. And with that, the White Pine League tightens up. That motivated me a lot because I don't like losing. I don't know. I think that gave us all motivation. So when we did lose that game, we were disappointed. Yes, in the locker room, we were mad. We were very disappointed. He gave us a pretty good speech, told us that if we play like this in the district tournament, we're not going to make state. That following day, that was one of our best practices we've ever had. We had kids in the gym at six in the morning. Before practice, we had kids there. It was definitely like a good experience for us because that loss actually like kind of kindled a fire under us, I feel like. It did something to the boys. It clicked in their heads that we're not gonna let this happen again. <laughs> just mad and we just use that. Just coming out and playing, making shots, defending, just doing all the things we need to do. But our chemistry was through the roof. I mean, we know where each other are gonna be. We know what plays work the best. We know how each other play. Getting new players in there and them gelling, I think that was a big step up from the year before. The two, two titans, titans of the league, league the Lapa Wildcats and the Prairie Pirates, Pirates going head-to-head. -head. You're in the same gym that you lost into in front of, in the same situation the year before. So you always have that feeling in the back of your head. Practice all that week, I had nerves. I was very nervous. I was th talking about to the boys, like, we have to bring it this game. And they'd keep pushing. Titus year out finds Alexander Ellenwood at the block. He turns and throws it off the glass for two. Definitely exciting to have the success that we had. We were just playing our style of basketball, and we knew we were a top team, so we just kind of knew that we just needed to take care of business. Gets it to Titus Year out for the floater. He gets the bucket and a trip to the line. Lapway could just not be caught tonight. The offense was uncontainable. Lapway goes on to win it 83 to 54, and the Wildcats bring home another White Pine League title to add to the collection. That was such a mon monkey off my back. Like, we put in extra hours of work in, and then when we finally won the district championship and we got together, we cut the net down, um, the whole crowd was there. It, it, just, it was a very good experience. All the endless hours in the gym just paying off and I'm playing hard for them, they're playing hard for me, we're playing hard for Lapway. Now we're going down to state, take care of business. We were on the bus, we were focused, gonna go win another state title and that I mean that's what our focus was to win the state title and all of a sudden we look at our phones start blowing up and yesterday the Lapaway Wildcats received a very special message to get them geared up for their state championship run peace and love peace and love and I am thankful and grateful to be making this video for my brothers. And we look down and we have messages from Kyrie Irving, an NBA all-star player. A lot of people are like, Kyrie Irving, you know, Lapway, what, how, how? why, what? The Kyrie thing kind of came up with one of our tribal members, Brooklyn Baptiste, he's um, really spiritual. And I guess Kyrie reached out to him and just looking for help. Being the guy he is, he just helped him out. And Kyrie Irving is part Native American with the Sioux tribe. The Sioux tribe and the Nez Perce have history together and 
Kyrie Irving wanted to know more about his Native American roots. He said, hey, you know, the Lapway boys are going to the state tournament. And then Kyrie Irving said, I would love to give the boys a message. Nimi Poo, Lapway, you guys are an inspiration. I want you guys to continue on this journey that you are currently on, that you have been humbly asked to perform and do. Um, we are always in Wankantanka service and we are always doing the work for our ancestors. That was amazing. I was shocked. I was not expecting that. That was pretty awesome, just like an NBA All-Star sending a message to us, a town of a thousand people. Truly grateful, man, for all the nice words, great words you said for our Lapway team. And we're just, we came out, we played hard tonight, and we got that win for Indian country. To Lapway, all of you guys, and everywhere, let's go get this. The way he just says things, and he definitely, he believed in us, and he, he knew that we were capable of taking that state title that year. You know, we got the shirt right here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we got the shoes too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you just gave us more motivation. That's what we feed off the most, probably, is motivation. Everyone erupted, we're going crazy. We stopped the bus, we were all jumping around, laughing. But right then and there, we knew that, like, okay, now we have to win this. We knew we had to make them proud. We had to represent our name, and we had to go get that state championship. We did not want to lose. We're at the Ford Idaho Center in beautiful Nampa, Idaho. It's the Real Dairy Shootout. Lapway, a team that is no stranger, as I said earlier, to this postseason tournament. So we played Riverstone, 22-0, haven't lost a game. They had um, three guys that were over 6'5", so that was going to be the tallest team that we played. The board goes up, slams it home. Give that man a chicken wing. First couple minutes was pretty difficult for us because we knew they were playing a different defense that we haven't seen all year. They came in with a game plan to stop Titus Year out. They played a box and one on him. Something that a lot of teams can't do because we have other players to score. It's Taylor, nothing but nylon. They knew a lot about Titus. They knew a lot about like, Case and AJ. And me and Terrell kind of, we knew we had to make big shots. We knew we had to step up. Shot is up and in. That was a three pointer. That's Ethan Hurt. And we both did. Three seconds, two seconds, shot is on the way, and it tickles the twine. Cross Taylor with another three pointer. And what a game we have. When you have a player like Titus, you have you have kids that are on your team that get unnoticed. You know, we have kids that are very, very good. Cross Taylor would be a star on any team in in Idaho. For him to, to step up in those big times. That's what he, I expect him to do. He puts in the work, he, he's a great shooter. When he started making those shots, I knew that it was his time to shine. So Lapway, again, up 8-3 this quarter. Now they're up 11-3. That was the most alive I've ever felt, being in front of all those fans, being in front of all the Riverstone fans. You know, hitting a couple big shots in the first half, so amazing. The beginning, it was slower, but then you, you start watching that game and momentum start picking up. Momentum start picking up, and then all of a sudden, boom, we're up 20 points. They ran up against a buzzsaw, a buzzsaw called the Lapway Wildcats. It was a relief being able to finally hold up that trophy and take home that banner. There's nothing like it. Hey, this is a message to Kyrie Irving. This is the Lapway Wildcats, your 2021 state champs. I appreciate all your words. Here we are, man. You helped us through this. You gave us those words of encouragement, and my boys answered. It was kind of just like, yeah, we did it, Kyrie. That felt great. I feel like we impressed them, too. We just love all that support, all the words you said for us, and we just came out here, we took care of business. It felt good knowing we pleased Kyrie. It's not just the boys who've proven themselves champs. The girls have won their league playoffs, their district playoffs, and now they're on their way to the state finals. So girls basketball became a sanctioned sport in 1976, and since then, you know, Lapway's won 11 state titles. That's absolutely ludicrous, right? And time runs out, and what do you know, Lapway? It's another championship for Lapway. Putting on a Lapway jersey and like playing for Lapway. When I was little, 
I always felt like I can't wait to do that. It's something I'm proud of, like representing the tribe and the community and the school as well. Dynamic duo, that's what they say. 1976, 1989, 1998, 2002, 2009, 2011, 2015, 16, and 17. They had a three-peat, and in 2020. I was part of the group that started the streak of going to state uh, since 2001 until to now. Growing up in Lapway, like, you kind of start out really young, so you kind of end up like playing with the same people you've played with your whole life. Like going into high school basketball, you kind of already have that chemistry. Where other programs have to rebuild until that group gets to a certain grade. A lot of these younger classmen are already playing tougher competition to get them ready for this level. Brian Agler, a two-time WNBA champion coach, returned to Lapway, Idaho to host his third annual holiday hoops camp. I'm grateful for the opportunities I've been given, and I want to try to create some opportunities for other people. We want to make sure that we empower them and we give them the tools that they have to be successful women that will end up being leaders. Put on the community for embracing girls' basketball as much as they have embraced boys' basketball, and that certainly doesn't happen in every small town. Our fans are really good at giving us energy throughout games. If we lose, it's not just going to be hard on us, but hard on our fans as well. Lapway has been number one in the state in every poll from the very beginning of the season. And they come up against Grace. Grace was number two in the final media poll. I think against them, we kind of walked in like with our heads already in. We're going to get to the championship tomorrow and not to just play this game first and take it one game at a time. A lot of it is, I don't know if the way we came into it, the previous year uh, of winning state, and then just maybe overlooking it, but at the same time, struggling offensively. I think that was the biggest thing. So Lapway really, really needs baskets now. Sabota puts up a three. That one's good. It was a heartbreaker because everybody wanted the uh, the back-to-back, -back, but at the same time, um, things just don't go your way. <laughs> They're up against Lapway, mighty, mighty Lapway, perennial powerhouse, defending champion, and Grace is now up by eight, 6.2 seconds to go, and Grace will advance to take on Prairie tomorrow in the championship game at the Fort Idaho Center. It didn't feel good, kind of felt like Life was over, but it really wasn't. You have to love the joy. They know how dominant Lapway's been for all these years. The girls did their best. They beat the next team by a lot, and you know we came out this next season with more mindset and more focus. Uh, the ones that uh, played more of a role this year got to experience the heartbreak last year. It drove them to want to, you know, do better than and not make the same kind of mistake. Final score, 71 to 37. From that, we just fed off that and we're like, we're not gonna lose anymore, we're gonna win state. Until next time, folks. Well, the high school basketball season is officially underway and in the girls' White Pine League, the Lapway Wildcats still appear to be the team to beat. We learn to move the ball around more, and if we have a shot, take it. And if someone's hitting and someone's hot, we keep giving it to them. Just kind of playing more so together, like as a team. A lot of us, we knew we were scorers, so that's what we kind of always try to do. Someone would have a really good game, and the next game, someone else would have a really good game. It's hard to really pinpoint a team in the 1A D1 that gives Lapway any any struggle. I mean, I could tell you probably right now that out of the 1AD1, there wasn't a whole lot of teams that scored more than like 20 points against Wildcats. Prairie is the only team that gives Lapway any kind of trouble. I'm gonna compare that rivalry to some of the great college football rivalries, Alabama-Auburn, Ohio State-Michigan. When those two girls teams meet, it's gonna be a dogfight every single time. When 
I was in high school, and it was the same thing. There's a different mindset, I guess, when you go into that game of, I want to win this game. Yes, definitely. We were always bantering back then. Um, I think the rival's probably always going to be intense. You know, we have traditions and programs that we want to live up to. Um, I even see like parents, you know, that I played against. It's the same family names that go on and on at Lapway as they do it. You know, we have a lot of the same names, lots of big families. I think we play better against better competition and like we just flow better. I like playing games where like the stakes are there and the games are close and intense. The girls team had actually struggled a bit midway through the season. They were still trying to kind of find themselves a little bit. Is there a new winner in the White Pine League? The Prairie Pirates made their case on Saturday with a win over Lapway, their first in Cottonwood in eight years. Of course, I felt like we won the state title because it's been over 10 years since we beat them in our home gym. And it was as if the, the roof blew off the gym and, you know, it was an exciting game. I mean, lots of excitement. Do we want the perfect season? Yes. But at the same time, we want them to grow as players. And so I think that loss helped us have more of a drive. That was our biggest lesson of the season. L's are always not just for losses, they're for lessons, so. <laughs> I think we learned that we have to start playing together as a team, rising up. I just knew that there was something that I said or something that us coaches did that during that switch on for them, and I knew that uh, when we went in, they were more focused than they ever were all season. The job that Ada Marks did is remarkable. They were not the same Lapway team that we're used to. And then they somehow put it all together in the district tournament, and then in the state tournament, just off the charts, completely wow. Heading into it was definitely nerve wracking just to know it was my last chance to win a state championship. I just had to think of it like that it was just another game to play. There was a second they caught up, I think it was like six to six. And it's good, nothing but this. And after that, we just kind of got going. And coming right back, Grace Sabota. The first game, I think our whole team knows that like, we want to beat this team as much as possible. So we came out with that mentality and that's the results we got. So that game really kind of set the tone just for the rest of the tournament. I don't think a 47-point comeback is in the cards, but we're going to play it out anyway. Kind of knowing we had to play our best, no matter who our competition was. Just always come in thinking about one game at a time and winning it and going to the next. That was as much of a surprise as anything, the way that girls team pulled it all together. Beat opponents, I think, by an average of 30, 35 points, I want to say. It was pretty cool because they were the only team in the whole state tournament to win their game by 50 points. Gonna be good. Again, these teams are very familiar with one another, very familiar with this court, very familiar with tournament action. Okay, this is Prairie. We gotta bring her A game, you know, because they're gonna bring theirs. We know what they have, we know what they got, we know what our job is gonna be. Here at the Fort Idaho Center. That boy gets the initial tip there. Underway and the first basket of the game, Jordan McCormick marks. To me, it was just like, I was in awe of how fast they got a big jump on it. Last second of the shot, drops, three-pointer for Lauren Gould. Gives her team a 21-9 lead, and that's where we stand after the first quarter of action. I think you can watch that when you're like, oh, I can watch this and play this. And until you hit the floor and see the real speed of them, it, you know, it's hard to adjust. and. I mean, my kids just play hard. They rally hard, they fight hard. You hope you're ready to rise to the occasion, but I felt like we just, the pace of the game got away early and we just had a really rough time keeping up. Lapway still playing hard, Prairie still battling, but it's all over now. 63 to 37, the final score. This is what we work for. This is the girls' biggest goal and no other awards, no other, like, whatever individual stuff mattered because that, you know, they wanted it as a team and they got it as a team. Lapway's gonna have to make more room in their trophy case, an already crowded trophy case. I, it's something I've always wanted to do. I think like playing in this girls program has really like built me up. And so once we got it, it was like, it gave me relief and like, it was like super exciting. Cause like there's so much good energy after that. Like, everybody just comes together. 
your, your expectations are so high here, but it's good expectations, you know? I came from an area where you go to state, you might go one time in your lifetime and the rest of the years you're watching. Here, Lapway, they go every year. So the expectations is every year we are expected to win. <laughs> very excited. Everyone was going to be coming back better and we didn't lose one starter. They would go out there and they would uh, they would mop the floor with teams. I'd never seen anything like it. You know, they had a streak, I want to say, where they scored 100 points in three out of four games. We just got to tell ourselves we got to keep going no matter who it is. We have to go 100%. Put on the gas and just keep going at them. It, it's controlled chaos, I think. We're going to run you out of the gym and let's see if you can stop us. And nobody can. Basketball is all about confidence and our boys were so confident after that. The goals are simple, just to win state, win districts, go all the way through and win, not lose another game. You know, we were ready to go. I think the point where everybody knew that, you know, this is Lapway's world and we're just living in it was probably the Vista Tournament. The Vista Tournament in the LC Valley is huge. You're playing the Lucent, the Clarkson, the Lapway. Those are three of the biggest schools around the area in basketball. Um, Lapway has never won the Vista tournament. They've came very close, but they've never won it. So in our head, we're like, what cap off a great season like this is, is to take the Vista tournament. We all thought we, this was a chance to go undefeated. We knew all the Lewiston kids, we've all played against them, so that was a must win game. At that point in time, people, they weren't really sure about us. Like, Yeah, there was definitely a chip on our shoulder. Going into that game, we knew people thought we were just a 1A team that beat up on 1As. They're like, yeah, Lapway's good, but to like go through that tournament and just leave like no doubt in people's minds. I really said something. And that kind of made an exclamation mark on, on the state. Showed that we can really play with anyone. We are one of the top teams in the state, and we went out and proved that that weekend. And when we did win, and we won pretty convincingly, I looked at my assistant coach, and I knew that you know, we had a chance. We could win every game after that. It had been 11 years since Lapway boys basketball team sat atop the basketball world. The Lapway Wildcats were crowned state champions on Saturday in the 1A D1 state championship game. What was special about it was uh, probably probably the adversity we overcame. Uh, the previous two years, my mom was the coach and we lost. We came up short by like three points and five points in uh, both those state title games. It was my last year, senior year. And so it was a big expectations of either, you know, can, can we finish that last game? Ivory Miles Williams overcame a dislocated finger to finish with 13 points while Emmett Taylor added 13 for the Wildcats. You know, Ivory in the 2017 graduating and, and, and signing with C of I and just having a real stellar career and Emmett following up. They're hoping to make it to the state title game for the fifth straight year. We left a big mark, um, some big shoes for me to fill in. And so I kind of took that upon myself because I wanted to be that leader and lead us to another state title. In the end, Lafayette Wildcats are going to state, winning 58-29. Lafayette wins the last three out of the four league titles. I didn't really have much um, four-year schools on me at the time out of high school, so my only option was junior college. And so I picked North Idaho and just because they were just a great school. You know, they sent a lot of talent, Division One. A former McDonald's All-American candidate is moving up in the collegiate ranks. Former Lapway star Emmett Taylor III is transferring to play for the Idaho State Bengals. I've been putting a lot of work in the mornings. Uh, we've been getting a lot of shots up this week, and so it just carries over, I think. Yeah, it meant a lot to me, but I think it meant a lot to the community as well. Just because it shows that, you know, someone from a small town can go play Division One and be successful and, you know, get an education. Wherever they go, 
that current lab play with and, and that's first heart, the feeling and everything. And one word we use in our in our culture is Tamina and it means heart. And that's one word I, I, I kind of told my teammates about and I use that motto. And one other one is uh, for the ones above, playing for those that you know that can't play anymore, that aren't here anymore, is kind of a huge one that I brought into college, and it's it's helped me, it's motivated me to play hard every night on that court. I know Ivory's a leader at College of Idaho, not just on the court, but off the court, and I think Emmett is excelling at ISU as well, and so I think that sparks sparks an interest of hey, yeah, if they can do it. I can do it too. That kind of like sparks your legacy right there. Like you you want to be them when you're older. It's everything. Um, I was one of those kids growing up. I used to go down to the state, watch boys basketball and girls basketball. And so that's kind of where I grew my love for the game. It's a big influence to me. I knew I wanted to be in their spot and their shoes. And they were big shoes to fill. I feel like that's what makes that lap boy so legendary. And that what makes you a legend is kind of having kids look up to you like saying like, oh yeah, I wanna, I wanna work hard, I wanna be like him in high school, you know what I mean? Definitely influenced me a lot, seeing those older guys go out and chase their dreams of playing basketball at the next level. But it kind of set something in me, my competitive nature is to kind of like one up those guys, you know? And when it came time to commit to school, he saw a future with the Idaho Vandals. It's hard being from a smaller school, definitely like, you don't get the publicity that maybe a bigger school down south gates or I don't think it matters at all where he came from. He's uh, he's taken full advantage of the opportunity in front of him. Now he's not going to the Vandals to redshirt. Like he's going there and he is expected to be a contributor right away for an Idaho program that's trying to get more competitive in the Big Sky Conference. He's one of the best players in the entire state and I don't think he led his high school team in scoring and he could have if he wanted to. He wanted to win games, he wanted his teammates to enjoy it. He wanted the full experience, and he made that possible for that Lafway team. Another Wildcat is headed to the next level. Cross Taylor taking his sharpshooting talents to the community colleges of Spokane. You know, the community, they love and support us uh, no matter what we're going through. You know, they love us every step of the way and they support us in the best way possible. It was like, okay, is gonna play high school, but then what they can do. Nowadays, you know, like Titus, he's going D1, two or three of the other guys are going play college ball, so that's a big thing for, you know, our reservation and our tribe because, you know, no one really thought about natives as that. You know, I don't like when, you know, people say, you know, about reservations that are, you know, there's bad stuff going on, the negative stuff, but, you know, it's good to hear the positive stuff too because there's a lot of positive stuff on the reservation. All the support I get from everyone, it feels great to give back. Just give them a few skills and hopefully just inspire them to go out there and do what they, what they want and what they believe. Yeah! They could accomplish anything with hard work. Hard work, okay? Hard work on three. One, two, three. I think that's super cool that we get to learn from someone that's super good at basketball and like get to play college ball. Do you want to play college ball someday? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I hope. All these younger guys coming up, I'm just paving the way for them and that Lapway can just be a school that gets in the loop and that college coaches know about Lapway and that they have, they have high-level basketball players. Good afternoon, Brandon Bainey alongside Logan Green. We're coming to you live today from Valley View High School in Caldwell, the site of the 1A D1 Boys State Basketball Tournament. And right away, we get to see the very best, the number one seed, the Lapway Wildcats, 24-0 on the year. This was definitely a business trip for us. We were very focused on this one. I think we were more focused on this one than, than our first one. We already know exactly what we have to do to win the state championship. Lapway, the defending 1A D1 state champions, entered this game on a 33 game winning streak. That's a top 10 winning streak in the nation. Just really focused and determined on reaching the goals that we've set like before the season even started. Titus, you're out the Idaho Vandal commit. 10 points away from 2,000 in his career today, Logan. So we'll keep an eye on that. The feeling was just I think I was more excited than anything. Here in our 
our opening quarter of action. It's a three ball left side for Terrell Ellenwood Jones. And just like that, left way in front, three nothing. Four minutes to play first quarter and get out. Oh, big block by A.J. Ellenwood. Out ahead to wide up for the two-handed slam. Left way up, two touchdowns, 14 nothing. It felt good, like, not trying to be cocky, but I felt like we knew we were gonna win. Coming to the tournament, our heads were pretty pretty big. We almost knew that we were gonna win that state tournament just because how well we were playing in the past few weeks, past few months. You know, did you see those shirts that we got that I already said back-to-back -back state champs, 27-0? You guys already made the shirts? Yeah, it wasn't going to be given, but we knew that we were going to win. Titus posting up left elbow in the air. Shot is in and 2,000 points in the career. All the hours and work that I put in is paying off. And then I just thank all my teammates, my coaches, family, everyone that's just behind me supporting me. Like. And Lapway. Two steps closer. And to be able to accomplish something like that, wearing a Lapway jersey, it's just amazing. Because it's like these last two games, and I'm, a, I'm not going to be able to put this jersey on again. So keep playing hard and just keep playing for Lapway and for my home and my people. As I mentioned, I don't know why, why we're so uh, like addicted to a circular thing called a ball. But traditionally, Indian way of life is a circle circle of life. The warriors of the past uh, used to have a game where you'd uh, run up against the enemy and just touch him. You'd call it counting coup. you just touch an enemy and, and be able to escape and get away as an art. I mean, you, you could get killed doing that. And so that was like a game. I always tell everyone, you know, we're young warriors out here. You know, we're modern day warriors. We're fighting against other teams in basketball now. Wildcats getting it started with one of the best pregame traditions you'll find in the Gem State. It's pretty much just showing native pride and just trying to carry that tradition. It's a cultural dance and we just we just want to show that we're proud to be native. Just being proud of, you know, who we are and where we come from in our tradition and our culture. Honestly, kind of just out there like our, our tribe, our people are still here, we're strong, we, we unite around basketball. So why are you the guy in the middle? Um, probably because I dance, I do those traditions, and I got the break, so. I thought that was pretty cool. We never even thought about that when we were playing. Later on, there's a little more recognition of our uh, culture and traditions and all that, which is so important to us. It's still a pretty neat deal. I don't know if we're the only ones that do that, I'm pretty sure we are. Are there any traditions like that that maybe we don't see? There's a tradition, but you see it's winning. All these Lapway fans on their feet cheer on the Wildcats. On the run out, why not ahead? A.J. Ellenwood and the foul. Will Case Bolt fix it up? Native Americans in history are known to be very well conditioned to, for gathering, for food, to go hunt. To you know, we're we're known to be athletic. We translate that very well into our style of basketball. With it, final 45 seconds, pass picked, Elias year out, two-handed slam. In transition for Elias year out. Carrying on that tradition and just that legacy, you just gotta play your hardest and take pride in it. Live up to Lapway basketball. Once again, they will be playing for a state championship, barring a crazy 24-second. 30 point comeback. No way it's happening. It's the final buzzer sounds. 79 to 43. The Wildcats are headed back to the 1A D1 state championship game, and they do it in convincing fashion over Logos. I, I said the same thing. I had a 50 year class reunion here five, six years ago. They're, they're, people are all over. You know, as, as senior classes graduate and they go, I stayed here. I love Lapway. I, you know, live here, grew up here, and probably will never go anywhere else. But uh, basketball has always been here. I can remember I lived a block down here, had one big back porch light, and my basket was up, and it was on a tree. So I was out there with a uh, flat basketball, playing back, shooting around, and that's that's where it all started for me. And uh, like I told my classmates, it's it's live. It's not love, it's a live. 
we live basketball. Not, you know, love is part of it, but live is, live is it. Basketball is life. <laughs> in that, in that way. Well, really, it's like North Idaho game night on IdahoSports.com. Couple of district rivals meeting up in the 1A D1 Boys State Basketball Championship game. Fourth meeting between these two teams. The two in the regular season were kind of close into the second half. The district championship 10 days ago was a, a runaway. They're like our rivals pretty much. We need a championship game we had to deliver. This would be a monumental upset, I think. Uh, but you know, that's why they play it here on the floor. And we'll see what happens here. Everybody filing in here at the Idaho Center. A lot of eyeballs want to watch these Wildcats play. I knew Cami and I, they are a very well coached team. They are our rivals right now. We look forward to playing them every time. Knowing a team so well and playing them a fourth time in one year, I mean, that's hard to beat a team twice, let alone four times. So we knew that we were going to have to bring it that game. Can Lapwaite extend that Idaho best winning streak to 36 games in a row? Or will Cami I pull one of the biggest upsets in Idaho high school basketball history? You know, it's all I ever wanted since I was a little kid. Ever since I seen my brother win a couple state championships, you know, being on that court, being able to celebrate at the end of the game, that's all I ever wanted. I think the way they think about it is the less possessions we have, the less points we'll score. Titus here out, full court pass to Why not? Underneath, reverse layup is in for two. That's 19 points now for the sophomore. Uh, we knew that we had to come out and set some more distance between us and just leave no doubt in people's mind like why we are one of the better teams in the state. Baseline pass stolen away. Why not on the run out? Titus here out. Cleared for takeoff. And a two handed jam for Titus here out. His second of the game. And this is not anything against the other seven teams that were here, but we knew that there probably wasn't going to be much drama because this Lapway team is historically dominant. We all knew that going back to back was going to be pretty special, not just for ourselves, but for our families, for our names, you know, for the community. And now Lapway is going to empty out their bench as well. Coach Eastman is going to bring in the subs. I definitely felt complete as a high school player. I just felt like I had nothing else to prove. I mean, I don't even know how to explain it. Growing up in the last four years have just, it's been like a family. Lapway's just always had my back and always my biggest supporters. It's crazy I won't be able to play again with the Lapway jersey on, but I know that there's a lot of people behind me and they're supporting me as I make my journey up to the next chapter in my life. Lapway can celebrate another dominating victory. They complete the undefeated season 27-0. Family, so they were uh, real close-knit and exciting to watch, of course. They made that excitement come back for everybody. Everybody's like, you know, just like I was telling about the 89, they were just pretty much similar. It's about, you know, the competition and, uh, you know, playing hard and winning a state championship or winning a tournament. But then it's, you know, it's those, those friendships and those bonds that you build when you're, when you're, playing, when you're playing basketball. <laughs> put Lapway's high school basketball program's history up against anybody in this state. And I guarantee you, Lapway is the best team in this state, bar none. I think Lapway wins the state title over anybody at any level in any classification this year in the state of Idaho. That team was that good. And I think you can go back to some of the other teams in past years and say the same thing, that they would have beaten anybody in the state. Now the 2022 1A Division I Girls State Basketball Champions. This will definitely continue. They're for sure going to bring back a lot more state championships a lot of years to come. I think there'll be a lot more banners here.
It's been an honor and a privilege to be able to be part of this program's success, whether you know, as a player, as a coach, just to be able to carry on the legacy of, and you know, continue to carry on the legacy of basketball. And hopefully that we're not just making our community proud, but our family and our tribe proud also. I just want all these kids to be successful once they leave, leave Lapway, whether it's for basketball or not, just to be successful as their own. I feel like this year has been such an inspiration to everyone in Lapway community. With COVID being around and we've had a lot of down moments and people passing, basketball has definitely been a time for us to come together and for the girls to win a state title and for the boys to win a state title in one year. Um, I think history was made and I feel like next year we could do it again. There's a lot of kids that look up to these high schoolers that high schools don't really realize it until they get older. They are role models and they are they do have eyes looking at them all the time. Kids look up to them, they come and talk to them, you know, they want to take a picture with them. I think all of these kids really, you know, they take that, take that pretty serious. We've all had people help us when we were younger, we had role models. And uh, so I think they try to pay that back. Crazy to look back at it, like what we've actually accomplished over the few years. We've definitely built something and Hopefully we just pass it on to the next generation and they just keep it going and build from there. Lapway, don't like, we just reload. Like we just reload our gun for more players. Like we have more players coming up, um, more younger cousins and stuff that are gonna be just as good, if not better. Here in a few years, you're gonna see all these these names come back up, the Ellenwoods, everything like that. And they're just gonna be honestly just a, a hybrid of, the, of what we were. Uh, the next generations that are come up, the younger ones, you know, the, the, you know, the freshmen or the, the junior high teams, they're strong. I think there's just a lot of support in this community and um, for, for this program and for basketball. And I think, you know, I don't see an end in sight right now. Yeah.